Hey everyone, it's Rob Ryder on Veterans Day 2021. It'll be 11-11-2021. And uh, today we're going to talk about Monumental in the Eyes of an Esquire. See what that's all about in just a second. Uh, uh, I am Staff Sergeant Robert Allen Wilewski, U.S. Army veteran. But you can call me Rob Ryder. And my email address is courtofrecord at AOL.com. And uh, if you've been following it along, right, you'll know most of the stuff I'm about to tell you. But if you haven't, you may have to go back and watch some videos for a little context. And so that would be like, uh, oh, go to Rob Ryder with three Bs, right, on YouTube. If you go to Notice the Constitutional Question and Subpoena, about three months ago, I was pointing out, uh, you know, this idea about constitutional question based on uh, what it says in the rules you can do right to challenge the constitutionality of something so I said well I want to challenge the constitutionality of 1 stat 23 find out if it's constitutional or not is it because 1 stat 23 is the first law passed after the ratification of the constitution right and in it it says this is the oath that satisfies the sixth article of the constitution and the oath is I, state your name, do solemnly swear, support the Constitution of the United States. Period. Right? So this law says this is the oath you need to take to satisfy the sixth article of the Constitution. And you look at the sixth article of the Constitution, and it says all these, you know, classes of offices need to take an oath. So now we're talking, well, they gotta take the oath that's in one stat twenty-three. And, you know, it's the Senators and representatives and the state legislators and the judicial and executive officers of the United States and of the several states all need to take this oath. All right, so technically anybody down to your dog catcher, whatever lowest level job of an officer is that would be considered an executive officer, right, or a judicial officer or a member of a legislature needs to have taken that oath. It doesn't matter if your state has another oath they have to take. You know, you're going to take that one too. But you're not going to add it to this one. This is the oath that satisfies the Sixth Article of the Constitution. First law of the United States, that's what I want to, you know, protect and defend. So is it constitutional or not to require these people to do that? And that was, you know, I was trying to, let's ask the question. Well, technically, you know, then that's what Warren did. And uh, his foreclosure got... Um, dismissed, disposed is what it says, but she talks about being dismissed in, the, in a ruling. Well, Warren was running for city council or something like that where he lives, and he ended up losing. But one of the other city council members is an attorney, and she came up to him and said, Warren, you need to know that your uh, dismissal in your case is monumental without going into any more detail. Okay, well, since then, a few other things have happened with other people in court cases. And, um, in fact, I'll have a link in the description with the video, right, of a, uh, of a hearing that went on yesterday, which would have been the 10th, right, in Florida on a foreclosure. And... Um, you know, if you listen closely, the judge is basically telling another veteran, right, PFC Charles, what he needs to do to have the grievances that he's pointed out on the papers that we submitted heard by the court. Which is, you know, basically you need to contact the judge's assistant and ask for a hearing. Duh. Right, so I think that ends up being basically you're going to apply for judicial uh, summary judgment based on a document called the Statement of Facts with some exhibits of evidence, which would be the laws that you're basing your statements on, you know, and make the judge the trier of the facts and the law. And if he agrees or she agrees, well, then they can find for you immediately. But what the judge was saying to uh, Jeff is the guy's first name yesterday, PSC, Charles, Jeff, right, that uh, um, 
you know, like basically he had put evidence in, but he hadn't told the judge, didn't, hadn't asked the court to do anything with it. Right? So if you want to have your grievances heard, you need to file, uh, ask for a hearing through the judge's assistant. And so that's all in the video. I mean, in the audio, I'll just listen to it, right? But I want to say that, you know, that, that the PFC did really good for the United States yesterday. Like, we're talking about a guy who's got, you know, traumatic brain injury, 100% disabled, right? They're trying to take his fucking house. And you look at all the devious shit that these Esquires do, it just is never ending. On, in fact, this hearing was a devious Esquire move. It's just we kind of caught them with their pants down, and, uh, you know, the judge gave up some information. And we'll talk about more of that in just a second. But, <clears throat> so anyways, that's what happened. So, Warren hears that his case is uh, monumental, and it's really not even a dismissal, right? And and so, you know, we're not even done with Warren's case yet. We're stri- still trying to do things in it. But what the, you know, because a dismissal didn't close the case, it's still there. In fact, I don't even know if <laughs> close means it's closed, because a summary judgment isn't a trial, and you're, as in common law, you're, um, if it's for a value more than twenty-one dollars, I have to give you a trial by uh, by jury, right? So it's never closed till you had a trial by jury. Yeah, you know, we'll leave that for later because I got another guy I got to talk to with what happened in his case. But you know, it was a busy week. I've got like three, three or four different people who tried things, and they all got some kind of answer, and now we're trying to put them all together. So, anyways, I'm getting ready to do this video and. I get a call from a guy out in Wisconsin who's in a um, three or four different cases in Wisconsin, but one of them was a bankruptcy court, and he had a hearing yesterday. And uh, he said the fucking uh, the judge went off on the other side, right? And it was that judge that was bringing up the supremacy clause all the time, which is another part of the sixth article of the Constitution. It's the part right before. The part that says who needs to take the oath that talks about, you know, that the Constitution and the laws dry thereof are the supreme law of the land of the United States, and the judges in every state are bound to, you know, follow the laws of the United States. So these are the things that we need to put in our statement of facts with the evidence being, well, here's the law I'm talking about, and use that as uh, the evidence for the judge to give you a summary judgment. So, you know, in between there, I had tried this thing with an exception because they had a thing called a bill of exception, which is basically the same thing where you're going to say, look, uh, these proceedings are wrong. Here's what's wrong. Da, 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 da. They had a thing that you could do in chancery called bill of exception. Except when you try to file in the court, they don't put it in as a bill. They put it in as a notice. Well, that isn't what I want. I don't want a notice. I'm trying to put evidence in. And that's like, you know, a little bit later, eight days ago. Now I say, hey, you, you know, it's judicial notice. That in the rules of evidence, you can file, you know, for judicial notice, which is basically just you saying, judge, take judicial notice of these facts and these laws and, uh, you know, telling him why it's important to your, to your particular case. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what, you know, the thing that's called the deposition was supposed to be. Well, technically, it's not called a deposition because a deposition is when somebody sends you questions and you answer them under oath. But what it is called, it looks like, is a statement of facts. Right? That's the legal term for the thing that they want to call an affidavit, but really isn't an affidavit because technically an affidavit is an oath rendered to writing. And what you're doing on a statement of facts or a sworn statement, as the Army calls it, has an affidavit in it, but that's not what you call it, right? So, you know, getting the proper terms is, you know, get the, all that figured out, but basically file an application for a summary judgment, a statement of facts, putting it all together with the exhibits being the laws you're going to base your conclusion on in your statement of facts. File, file it with the court into the proper name of the court, Right, because they don't tend to use the proper name of the court when the attorneys are doing it, because they're not trying to do any of this shit legally. It's all being done, you know, on some kind of uh, well, it's being done under Talmudic law. You're being cheated. It's really that simple. 
So, you know, so it isn't that the judge cannot rule to, in your favor, given the proper information. It's just we're never given the judge the proper information. Most people go to court and they argue the facts that the plaintiff is saying that they're guilty of. But that isn't what you want to do. You want to argue the fact that the plaintiff didn't have any authority to bring the case in the first place. And oh, by the way, right, attorneys are considered judicial officers by these definitions, and therefore they needed to take the oath of the sixth article, or to satisfy the sixth article, which is this oath here, and if they haven't done it, well, then they're impersonating a public officer. Right, those are my facts. We're not even talking about what they said you did. We're going to talk about what we say they did. So that's what we're trying. All right, I'm just going to show a couple of things that have happened, uh, put the audio in, let you all listen to it, and uh, go on with some other documents to try it again, um, you know, based on the things I'm telling you now, and well, we'll see what happens next. So hang on a second. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to show you right now. I've already covered another video. You could just go watch the video, but I'm going to show you where it came from, right? If you go to the New York uh, nycourts.gov website and go under, uh, where is it here, e-filing, right, which is where we're at now, you'll get, see this filing page. You click on it, it take you to this page, and you scroll down, it says search as a guest. Well, now you can search after you tell them you're not a robot. All right, and next thing you know, it's asking for a case number. And the case number we're looking for in this case is uh, 2019-52422. Right, it'll be in the Dutchess County of Supreme Court. All right, so that's what number you put in here. Go down over here, hit search, and you'll end up in this document page, which has everything that's happened in this <laughs> case so far. Um, and you get down to uh, notice, const notice the constitutional question, right? That's when Warren put it in on uh, the 14th. And um, some time later, on the 1st, right, so two weeks later, the judge is putting in a decision and order. And in that decision and order, she's pointed out that uh, Warren did file a notice of constitutional question. All right, and so she's she's seen the document. She's not denying seeing it. But that isn't the reason she uses for dismissing the case. She goes on to point out the crime that the plaintiff's attorney committed, which is in New York you're supposed to file a, uh, a 90 day notice with the state revenue office. And she's saying that what they filed was fraudulent. Well, that means it was fraudulent against the state. You know, they didn't do this against Warren. No, they did this against the state of New York. And the judge just said so in her freaking answer. Right? So now we're taking that and we're going to the state of New York to the revenue office, and, and Warren's already done it, filed a complaint there, has a properly done, you know, what they call an affidavit, and um, <laughs> see what they have to say to that. You know, what the evidence in this case being, the exhibit being, the you know, the answer for the judge. The judge says this is what happened. So it'd be interesting to see what they do that with that, right? But So anyways, you know, the, this case should have been, technically then, and since, you know, if it was, if this was a decision, right, it should have been over. But all these other documents have been entered so far, or after that. A lot of these were from Warren. We're trying to say, well, you know, you know it wasn't a notice. Um, we we're trying to point out they committed a crime, right? It was unlawful conversion. So that would have been like your affidavit of what, what happened. But they put it in as a notice. And we put in a first subpoena, so that application is still going. Um, then we put in another, <coughs> they put it in again as a notice of constitutional question. But that isn't what, really what we were asking for. We were trying to ask for a bill of exception. But they didn't put it in as a bill, they put it in as a notice. So anyways, there's been a lot of stuff going on. And now, um, there's a letter that's been, uh, actually, that isn't that. There's been a consent put in, right, to change attorneys, right, in this new attorney firm take over. Well, if this case is dismissed, why do they need a new attorney firm? 
I guess we're going to find out. But I wanted to point out uh, and put it on the air because you know, that's a big attorney firm. They're, you know, top dollar. They're down on, uh, what's the address? Avenue of the Americas, which is like 6th Avenue in, uh, in Manhattan. Right? Blank Rome LLP put in a notice of entry into this court case where it says, uh, please take notice that uh, within the street copy, da, 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 and entered with the clerk of the within name court on uh, October 1st, 2021. Okay. Well, the state actually has its own form for this. And it says what you're supposed to put in is clerk of the Supreme Court, comma, in this case, it'd be Dutchess County. So this high-dollar attorney firm is altering the state form, and, well, they're, you know, simulating the legal process now. So it'll be interesting when we put that answer, you know, as part of our answer into the next go-around, which will be Warren asking for a summary judgment based on his statement of facts and exhibits. And one of the exhibits that we're going to be putting in now is this thing with these tards filed. As soon as I find it again. This right here. Clerk of the within name court. Well, that isn't what it said to do. Clerk of the Supreme Court, comma, Dutchess County is what it's supposed to say, and it doesn't. So they, you know, altered a state form. Interesting. Okay, hang on a second. All right, so please do write this down, 2019-52422. If you want to follow along to see what else happens, right, just uh, go find this page for yourself and keep track of things as we put them in. And we'll see what happens next. It's interesting. This it says there's two pages, and it doesn't show a second page. Although it did yesterday. Oh, there they are. Notice of entry. Because right, there were two different motions put in, <coughs> put two different notices of entry in, da da da. Okay, 2019 All right, let's talk about another case now. All right, so, uh, you know, some of, a lot of these videos are building on each other. So you got constitutional question ends the foreclosure. And then exception and notice was about filing a bill of exception, which is, you know, the right idea, right information, just not call it the right thing which led to doing a judicial notice and deposition, which is where we were when we started to file these documents I'm talking about in these next couple of court cases. But as the judge said yesterday, right, that uh, if you want your grievance heard on these matters, you're going to have to ask, contact the judge's assistant and ask for a hearing. Right, so you have to apply for a hearing. Um but I had done this video, right, eight days ago, and then I helped, in fact, I may have shown it in this video, or one similar to it, put into the guy's court case. In fact, let me show it. Uh, actually, it's like the one I'm going to show you from Florida, because they were really written at the same time, just a few different facts. But basically, in his case, right, so we filed it in. <laughs> he filed it in on the third. But uh, come to find out that... Um, the judge magistrate had issued a disposition on the first. And in Michigan, a thing they call a judicial dis disposition is the same as a judicial, um, not judicial disposition, a summary disposition is a summary judgment in other states. <laughs> right? So they had already filed for this other party before we even filed the paperwork. <coughs> so that's what happened with Mike. Right? Mike was wondering what happened. Well, that's what happened. Mike, they already put an answer in. But again, I don't believe a summary judgment is final because Mike never had a freaking trial. Right? So he never had a jury. So we should be able to somehow go in and say, uh, you know, whatever we're going to say and provide new evidence to the judge to get him to change his verdict. All right? So that's what we're going to do, Mike. We're going to file something and say, Judge, we'd like you to reconsider because of this, this, and this. and Give him a statement of facts and some evidence <laughs> very similar to what you've already put in and see what he says to that. All right, so <laughs> there wasn't much to learn there except we got, you know, 
we were too late. Need to be a little bit quicker getting the paperwork in. Okay, this next one is in Orange County, uh, Florida, right? So you Orange County, Florida court records, you'll find this site here. Orange County clerk. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, go down here and say search all. And um, the gentleman's name is Jeffrey Charles. I'm not a robot. Right, and, you know, because they show everybody's court cases on here. Well, <laughs> there's more than one case, so the one you're looking for is 2020-CA-00-2941-0. Loan Depot Com LLC versus, right, Jeffrey Charles LLC. And, uh, you know, any of these that have a green document next to it, you can download them. So as you see yesterday, there was a hearing and a hearing. So actually two hearings yesterday. Not really sure what that's about yet. And then they put in some court min minutes. Right? And uh, we'll look at the court minutes first, I guess. How do we do that? Let's just look at the court minutes. What, what happened there? How come I'm here? It's not what I'm, oh, got to go over here. What? Hang on a second. Okay, I had to refresh. That's what was wrong. So they put in these court minutes, which said open court, or court opened at 846. Ex parte before Kevin B. Weiss, he's the presiding judge. And yada, yada, yada. So all they really said was, uh, uh, right, here's the parties. Look at they got Jeffrey Charles as a party, and they got uh, Charles L. Eldridge, L. Jr. Esquire, as attorney. But attorney must be a party. Because down here it says this other attorney appeared on behalf of the plaintiff. And if you listen, it sounds like there's two, there's two attorneys there. So I think Eldridge had to hire his own attorney to hear him in this court case because of the paperwork that we had already put in the court case. Right, that uh, they put a loop in what they're going to do. But here's an example of see, they're saying this is in the circuit court of the Ninth Judicial Circuit in and for Orange County, Florida. That really isn't the proper name of the court. Right, it's like the Ninth Judicial Circuit Court of Florida. Right, Orange County, something like that. But uh, you know, there is no court name in the. So. But this is the hearing that they said they had yesterday. But it was in this hearing that the judge said, you know, what he was telling Jeff what he needed to do to have a, you know, to have his uh, his grievances heard, and that'll be in the tape that I'll put on or the recording that I'll put in the description here in just a little bit. But let's look at what we had put in. And again, this is case 2020-CA-002941-0. Tiffany Moore, Russell's website. Somebody had asked me in an email for this, right? So, so back on the 4th, right, just after the video, we filed, uh, we're trying to file a judicial notice in, and they put it in as a freaking notice. So now it's supposed to be evidence. But what I had also written was this thing called the deposition, which was like a one-page document. Statement of facts, proper name for it now. And I had told uh, Jeff, said, look, after get the notice, then get it back from them, file stamp copy, and then make it the exhibit of this deposition and file it back in, right? So that they can't say they didn't go in as evidence. Well, that's what we did. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just to give a flavor for the where we're at and what we're putting in. So while this wouldn't be called a deposition anymore, this could be called the statement of facts of Jeffrey Charles, victim. All right, before me this day, a person appeared, Jeffrey Charles, who being duly sworn deposes and says, now that has to do with doing these things they call an affidavit properly. All right, so this is the Florida Duties of a Notary Public Handbook. And if you go on and look at what they call an affidavit, right, they put the 
state of Florida, county of, and they put some statement. And then in here is where you're supposed to put whatever you're going to say. Then there'll be a place to sign for the Affinian, right? And then sworn to or affirm before me with the notary signature. That's the proper way to do this. <laughs> but normally, from what I've seen, most people don't have any facts in here. <laughs> so that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> Excuse me, make sure we put them in. And because it said uh, being duly sworn deposes and says, say, well, they said depose. Must be a deposition. But they didn't want to buy that word, so we'll just call it, you know, another legal word, which is a statement of facts. Because I'm not really ha happy calling an affidavit because I can find a law dictionary where it says an affidavit is an oath rendered to writing, and you can't challenge an oath. But evidence can be challenged. We're trying to put evidence in. And if they don't challenge it, then it becomes proof. All right, but first you got to get it put in. So where in the heck was I? No, not there. Okay, so here we go. Right, I, Jeffrey Charles, am a victim of crimes against the United States and Florida for making all these crimes Crimes against the state or the United States, because that's whose law was violated, right? And that we're just the victim. Uh, and the victim of crimes against the United States of Florida by public officer imposters impersonated as judicial officers who are maliciously prosecuting me before a tribunal not recognized by the laws of Florida using a simulated legal process as this case number we're talking about. Evidence of judicial officer imposter crimes are the laws of the United States of Florida I incorporated into the judicial notice of facts and laws that these individuals are offending by their omission executing the proper oath to satisfy the sixth article of the Constitution of the United States? Exhibit A. Right? I have previously requested Exhibit A be filed as a judicial notice into the Ninth Judicial Circuit Court of Florida as evidence. I demand the offenders be prosecuted for their crimes, that I be compensated for the damages to my life, liberty, property, rights, titles, and interests. As a defender of the Constitution of the United States, I inform any and all persons acting as government executive or judicial officer in the United States and this state, including all lawyers, that they must execute the oath in 1 Stat 23 of the United States Statutes at Large, later codified in the United States Code as 4 U.S.C. 101, or state officers prior to executing his or her office. All right, so an attorney can't bring a case to court until he's taken this oath. It's really that simple. Failure to comply with the Constitution of the United States will result in your imprisonment. Well, that's what we say. All right, so what do we do? Well, he took what he'd already filed once, put Exhibit A on it, like I told him to, and put it in, right? It was a judicial notice of facts and laws. Right, that he, a citizen of the United States, protected by and defender of the Constitution of the United States, is a paramount interest holder, and all property contested under case number in the circuit court, right, the fictitious name, informed that tribunal and the Ninth Judicial Circuit Court of Florida, which is the name on the website, of their duty to take judicial notice of the following facts and laws as required by this, uh, by the, Flo the Florida Rules of Evidence. So take judicial notice. The sixth article of the Constitution of the United States, Supreme Law of the Land, decrees, Senators, Representatives, before mentioned, and members of several state legislatures, and all executive judicial officers, both the United States and several states, shall be bound by with their affirmation to support this Constitution. Now, I can see now that, you know, what the judge said in the uh, bankruptcy case yesterday in Wisconsin, where he was pointing out the Supremacy Clause, which is the very next clause, you know, of the sixth uh, article. All right, so here's the sixth article, and this is the part I, that we, I just, you know, that I put into my thing, but the first, the one just above that, that this Constitution, laws of the United States, which shall be made pursuant to thereof, and all treaties made, which may be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding. There's your evidence. All right, here's the facts. So you put that into your paperwork, and the judge says, well, that's what it says. Then now he's, you know, been apprised of the facts. 
Until then, they're like they're, you know, acting like everything's on a blank slate. No one has said what law they're using to um, prosecute their claim. Where are you now? Anyways. Right? So that right, so now take judicial notice. It's a fact that Black's Law Dictionary, second edition, defines a judicial officer as a justice for the peace, magistrate, or judge, or any other officer of the court. Okay, well then know those plain English dictionary defines officer of the court as any person who has an obligation to promote justice, uphold law, including judges, clerks, court personnel, and police officers and attorneys. Well, there you go. So, you know, we went from the six articles saying that it was judicial officers to the fact that an attorney is a judicial officer, so they need to take notes to satisfy the six-article constitution. Take judicial notice and act to regulate the time manner of administering certain notes. That'd be Exhibit 1. Is the first act of Congress signed the law after ratification. Constitution, that'd be, you know, one stat 23 was what it was called, and legislates that the oath or affirmation required by the six-article constitution of the United States shall be administered in the following form. Right? So I'm not going to read this whole thing. I mean, it's online. You go read it yourself. Right? That was uh, this the deposition. Right? Um, <laughs> well, then this letter came in on the 8th saying that uh, on November 10th it would be a non-jury trial. Well, that'd be a summary judgment because there's no jury. It's scheduled to be held in this manner. It closed here in uh, the original note. Right? And they put the original note so forth in. Which was interesting because what we did. So they put in the note and mortgage. Right? And so I got a hold of Jeff. said, Jeff, go download that document. Go find the note that's in there. And sign your name on the pay of the order of line. Right? This is a note that's been endorsed. Well, it was endorsed in blank. That's what the judge in New York said was in uh, 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 Shelley and Warren's case. It said that Shelley had uh, signed a note and had executed a note endorsed in blank. Well, no. Nobody is executing a note endorsed in blank. Right, because that's this is where you're executing this document. They put this thing on after you leave, and they take your private note and they convert it, which is what securitization is. It's a conversion, and they convert it to a check. And the way you can tell it's a check is because it says "pay to the order of." That's used on checks, and they leave this line blank, and it says "without recourse, loan depot." Right. So I said, "Well, you know, go get it, Jeff." You can use electronic way to write your name in there, right? And then put your Florida driver's license so we know who it is. And we'll just claim the damn check. Right? So now there's evidence in this court case that we've claimed the check. Well, then they had the hearing, which you'll listen to on the tape. And uh, from the hearing came the minutes. But in the hearing, like I'm saying, the, the judge is making <laughs> clear to Jeff that what he needs to do, he wants his grievances heard. Grievances heard is to get a hold of the judge's assistant and ask for a <coughs> excuse me ask for a hearing and that's what we're going to do now when you listen to what's going on you're going to you know it's kind of messed up so hang on a second because if you go back to September 10th you'll find this rule or order rule to show cause right and that document has on it right First of all, it's got the wrong name of the court. And it says, uh, right, order and adjudged shall appear at a hearing on a foreclosure is set for this date before this judge in the Orange County Courthouse at Orange County Courthouse uh, gives the address, hearing room, Orlando, Florida, or at 8.30. So yesterday at 8.30, that's where Jeff is, and there's nobody there. Things, you know, shut down. Like it's dark inside. And come to find out, they're doing it all electronically. But that isn't what, you know, the order that he got. 
So, you know, that, that'll be part of what this conversation is. They're having. So I'm down here. This whole place is dark. Where the hell are you people at? All right, how am I talking to you when I'm at the courthouse where it says on this order to be and there's nobody here? I mean, he's just hammered. I mean, he did a great job of hammering. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to leave it here and let you listen to what happened. And then I'm going to have another video where there'll be a little more on this and uh, what happened in Wisconsin at a, uh, a bankruptcy hearing. But I'm going to have to save that for another video so I can download that conversation. And, uh, you know, we'll listen to see what happened. But uh, talking to Andre, the guy involved, he said that the judge was ripping the frickin' prosecutor up one side down the other. You know, and it was that judge pointing out the supremacy clause. So, you know, again, Andre could tell that the judge was trying to tell him what to do. He just wasn't picking up on what it was. And that's why he called me. He said, you got to listen to this. The judge is trying to tell me what to do, right? So what is it he's trying to tell me to do? Well, that's what we'll find out. Well, very good. Uh, <coughs> um, again, this is Orange County in uh, Florida, and that's the case number, and uh, this is where we are today. So by next week, you know, because this one uh, Jeff can do from home by himself, he can actually, you know, file his own documents in. We're going to put in a statement of facts. And uh, some exhibits, which is basically what we just did with the deposition and exhibits, except we're going to name it a little bit different and and have it along with the application for summary judgment. <laughs> right? And once you put the application in, then <coughs> we need to, uh, and I believe that's why you contact the judge's assistant and not the clerk of the court. It's I need an app. I need to file for an application for summary judgment, right? So that they can give you the day, and once you have the day that it's going to be, then you can fill out the paperwork to put in the clerk's box to say there's going to be a hearing on this thing on this particular day. So, you know, everything's in the details. The devil's in the details. But what I can tell you is, right, that if we need to do every jot and tittle properly to get relief. All they're really talking about is doing the first step right. Because none of whatever they're talking about has anything to do with you. Right? We're not <laughs> making their case our case. We're making the fact that they brought a case our case. And how they did it. <clears throat> so let's leave it there. Have a great day. See you now.